Hey everybody, Edo here, and I am as excited as I can be because I have Keith <laughs> Mateka on the line. Say hello, Hey, Keith. hey everybody. So, um, lots of stuff going on. There's so much I want to talk to you about, um, but we'll do a little promotion to start. So, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the Whatnot Cabinet is coming to Kickstarter on June 2nd. There it is. You got the box. Nicely played, sir. Uh, I hope you can do that with the next one as well. But so uh, Keith designed the solo version of the Whatnot Cabinet, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But not only that, there's more. Keith is also launching Role Player Adventures um, right. on June 23rd, right after Whatnot Cabinet ends. Can you lift yep. that box up? Do you have something you can... Uh. I can if you want to give me a second, but it's right. it's a big box. Yeah, it's a big box. He'll send me an image, and I'll put the image up for the cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and so that's on uh, June uh, 23rd, and if yep. you're not familiar, this is like the game Keith has dedicated the last half century of his life to. It, is it a feels that way. Gloomhaven size storytelling adventure in the role-player universe. Um, it's got like... 14 sto- uh, like books, right? And it, like- yeah, it's got 12 books. I, and I think at one point it did account to how many words were in all the all the storybooks and stuff, and it was well over 400,000. And it, and there's been stuff been added significantly since then. So I wouldn't be surprised if the final word count of this game is like half a million words. It's crazy. But it's... It's, it's uh, answers, right? <laughs> yeah, it's... The, the person... I mean, the number of people I have working for me on this is, is bigger than anything I've done. Um, it's, it's this massive kind of, uh, I mean, the big hook is when people were playing role player, you know, over the last, whatever, three, four, five years and the comment of like, this game's great, but I want to do something with my character. Well, like this is the box. So like, uh, you don't need to have played role player to play role player adventures, but if you, um, if you have played role player, then you can import the character that you made from role player into this game and, uh, go on like a, there's like an 11 uh, adventure campaign, uh, and then there's like an additional side quest uh, that uh, people can play over and over and over again. So um, it's it's uh, it's not a legacy game, so you're not like ripping up cards and stuff. Um, so it's definitely replayable, but it's all about making uh, interesting choices um, and seeing how the world reacts to the choices you make. And then um, there's also a, a you know mechanical piece to the game where there's Dice rolling and dice manipulation like you'd expect in a role-player game. Um, yeah, so June 23rd, I'm super excited about it. <laughs> and yeah, and the way I think about it is it's sort of like a role-playing game, but where you're heavily following a story, right. and like all the maps and then all these additional mechanics are layered in based on sort of the role-player right. world, which you've created. Uh, speaking of which, like lots of interesting topics. Um, <laughs> so, so we have those two Kickstarters. We're going to talk about solo games. We're going to talk about adventure games a little bit. But then... Right. Today, yesterday, this morning, last night, Cartographers <laughs> um, is nominated for, uh, I think, the Kenner Spiel, Spiel right? Is that yep, correct? Yeah, the Kenner Spiel. So the, the family-oriented Spiel des Jahres Award at Essen. Uh, no, the, no, that's the Kinder Spiel. The Kenner Spiel is the, 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 ga- the gamer's game. The gamer's game. The gamer's game. Yeah. yeah. My German's not what it used to be. <laughs> um, and so, and that's like a huge deal. Yeah. I mean, you nominated for Best, best Picture, basically. <laughs> Yes, I mean the fact that there's there's like only three games in the category, and one of them is one that I published. That's pretty crazy, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I stayed up late last night uh, to see the nominations. I mean, there was kind of rumors that that cartographers might uh, make it um, onto the nomination list, and and it did, and, and it's totally awesome. I mean, um, it's a huge award, and um, especially in Germany. I mean, it's a German award. It has a huge impact on sales in Germany. Uh, winning or being nominated for that award. Um, there's a lot of people who play games in Germany that, you know, they might only buy a couple games a year, and they're always the winners of the spiel. So um, that's a huge deal there and a huge honor. So um, the winners get announced in July. So, you know, the fingers are crossed so that uh, Cartographers wins. But I'm definitely honored to be nominated. Um, you know, so it's crazy. I mean, when I, when I sat down and said, hey, I'm going to try to make a board game one day, like, the idea of, of having won one of these big German awards, like, you know, it was like, so it's such a crazy idea that like, uh, if, if, if like 
if uh, past if I were to go back and, and told past self, like he'd slap me silly, you know. So it's just it's just cool. Well, and that that's a great segue, mind you. <laughs> that's another game from the role player universe. Uh, right. You also did lock up. I know that Cartographers Two is on the horizon somewhere at some point yeah. somehow. So all yeah, sorts so, of exciting stuff, right? Yeah, so Cartographers Heroes is the next big version of, not big, but the next version of Cartographers standalone. We're going to do a Kickstarter in, we're looking at September, September, October, maybe a little bit earlier, depending on how things go. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, people have been really digging Cartographers, so like, we've got some new cool ideas and uh, kind of brought the, the band back together, like the same, um, you know, uh, the original designer came back to do some consulting, but... Um, Jordy, unfortunately, uh, well, not fortunately for him, he actually got a job at CIMON in Brazil, um, and he had like a conflict of interest kind of going on <laughs> there. So like, um, he kind of wasn't allowed to work on it directly. Um, but John Brieger from your area in, uh, in Northern California did um, development on the original game, and then he came back to kind of lead the development on the new one and kind of keeping Jordy in in the loop, uh, kind of building on the stuff that Jordy had already done. Obviously, Jordy. Had a lot of faith in, in the stuff that John had done on the first version, so uh, it was kind of cool to those those roles kind of flipped a little bit in terms of developer and designer. Um, but uh, it, th- there's some really cool stuff in the new version, so uh, you know, keep an eye out. Yeah, for sure. And so, so we're gonna. So then we're talking to younger self, Keith. And back <laughs> in that at that Keith, that Keith was working for Raven Studios, right? Right, Madison, yep. Wisconsin, in the cold, um, and. <laughs> And um, more than that, you just, it's been two years full time Thunderworks right. games. And recently think, on Facebook. Yeah, uh, in the last like two, two, in the last two weeks or so, I saw the Facebook update. It's like, the, it's been two years ago since you announced that you left Raven Software. I was like, oh man, that, it feels like a million years ago uh, that that happened. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, like, and, and you've been working in your home basement office corner. Um, yep. and, uh, you're now officially looking for figuring out an actual office warehousey right. place, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, the idea is that when I was, when I went full time, it's like, I, uh, this whole thing's scary. You know, there's no safety net, you know, the safety net that's not there anymore. So I'm thinking I got to keep costs. I got to, I got to keep all my expenses in check. So I'll just keep working from my basement. But, um, you know, we've ha- I've had enough success um, in the last year um, that it's, it's started to feel like, um, I mean, I have more people starting to help me. Um, and it's like, I need a space outside of my basement to kind of conduct some of the, the business that I do. So um, I'm my wife is active, is helping me out and we're actively looking for a space where we can war- warehouse some stuff so that like everything doesn't get stored in my garage and stacked in a pile in the kitchen or whatever. Um, replacement parts and like, you know, uh, stock for conventions or for my website sales um, and uh, trying to get some people to help me out with that because it does eat up uh, a lot of time uh, to, to do all that kind of stuff, to balance, to put on all these hats. Like these hats keep getting heavier and heavier. It's like they, I need to find places to, to other heads to put them on, you know. Um, and uh, so, the, yeah, it's kind of the next stage. Um, you know, Thunderworks Games still technically is an, uh, has one employee, which is me. Um but I think, like in the next yeah. couple months, that's that's gonna change, you know. So, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of help from contractors um, and friends and volunteers and stuff, and and I couldn't do the stuff that I do without their help. But, like as an organization, you know, I'm not paying payroll to anybody but myself. Um, so it looks like that might change, and and like it's it's scary um, but exciting um, because um, it's another that same moment where like I'm expanding, but like there's still no safety net. And then like, I have to get used to having that, you know, evaluating that risk and figuring out like, um, whether it's worth like taking that risk to expand and, and, and grow. So, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, it's cool. And I think I don't see Thunderworks getting any smaller. Like things continue to go, uh, well for me, which is fantastic. Um, you know, the, the number of titles that I have coming out is, is increasing, um, and the ones that I have, I am continuing to support. Yeah, I so mean, I, th- I think the the win for you right now, or I mean, what's allowing you to, for this growth is that you now have a series of of product and product lines that are 
growing and, and becoming, you know, evergreen, right? You have the role player, the first game, the expansion, right. which continue to sell, and the new one, which is going out the backers soon. I assume. That hasn't been delivered yet, has it? It has not. The, the, some people in China got their copies, but the U.S. copies just started shipping today. Cool. Um, so that, right? uh, yeah, Fiends and Familiar ships started, started shipping in the U.S. today. Right. So um, you have that line. Cartographers yeah. obviously was doing well and mm-hmm. uh, is, is, is even, even bigger. Uh, and it was also right. nominated for a variety of awards in the States as well. Yep. Um, and then presumably with role player adventures, you're just going to rip it off. And, 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 <laughs> That's but, the idea. But, yeah, no, but you'll then have a, another, another uh, uh, leg to your nope. stool or leg to your chair. Right. It's another product um, to support that like, um, and like, you know, I don't, I tend to support my products, you know, as much as I can. So um, that means like, you know, demo teams get bigger. Um, that means like the number of inquiries I get from, you know, international publishers or, or other partners gets bigger. So um, I already feel like I'm, um, you know, pretty strapped in terms of time and, and energy. So, uh, you know, it's something's got to change. And, and that means, you know, take a risk, uh, hire, hire a person or two, find a space uh, to, to move my stuff so that I can have more separation between uh, work and life some, sometimes, which is important. Um, which is something I'm, I'm horrible at, but it's, it's something that well, at least my and, wife and, keeps and telling it's me it's important. right now, right? When, when everyone's working. Oh, uh, for sure. You're already working out of the home, but everyone's stuck in the home. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. For sure, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And so, well, so, uh, there are a few different categories to talk through. Uh, I think we'll have to keep it brief all in, but one of the things we were going to talk about a little bit, I think, was um, on the side of the whatnot cabinet, right? Sure. Um, you know, for, for those who are not familiar, uh, even though Thunderworks trajectory looks like this, <laughs> the first games is maybe like this. Um, Keith has done solo, uh, versions of all of the games that I've done with Steve Finn and Beth Sobel, that sort of line, that nameless line of herbaceous sunset over water, herbaceous sprouts. And, um, you're back at it again for the whatnot cabinet. Um, I'll just let everyone, all the fans out there, know that it's harder and harder to get Keith's time these <laughs> days because of how successful he's been. So we'll see how much this continues. But I, we, this one, this work's done, so he can't take it back. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, these projects are are fun because, um, you know, I'm coming in three fourths, four fifths of the way through the project, right? Like, um, a bunch of decisions have already been made. Like, so it's kind of like, here's a, it's, it's like, it's like a video game puzzle. It's a video game puzzle mode where like they set you in the situation and they're like, you know, you've got three turns, figure out how to get out kind of thing. We're like, right. this is the game. This, uh, n- uh, nothing, nothing here can be changed. Like maybe you can have a couple extra cards if you want Keith, but you got to ask real nice. And, um, you know, it's got to feel like st- what Steve designed and, but you got 12 extra cool. cards, Keith. 12. <laughs> See? Yeah, I'm a good negotiator, <laughs> but um, and then just like fi- figuring out how to how to make it an awesome fun game that's like as fun as the multiplayer version, but also kind of has its own space and has its own kind of sensibilities to it. So, um, yeah, I think th- these projects have been uh, fun, and actually they're nice because they're small. Like I can just go in and like work my my exercise my design brain for a while, you know, write up a rule book and be like done. <laughs> Uh, let me know when it's out, Ed. <laughs> you know, um, so it's yeah, they're it's nice always, and short too. It's always fun to ask Keith uh, a question about one of these because he hasn't played it in so long. He's like, ah, I don't. Uh, let me read the rules again. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, I think that's that's true for any game. Like, even when people ask me stuff about role player, obviously I played role player millions of times, and um, but I still look it up. Just to be sure, it's like, what did I write in the rule book, you know, five years ago? Because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, and you know, you know, sometimes things change at the last minute, you forget. But, like, um, yeah, I mean, it, and so, what's fun is, like, when I go back and read something I wrote or something that I designed like, a year or two ago, and, like, I'm surprised. Like, like I'm impressed with myself. I was like, man, like, I Keith from two years true. ago had a pretty good, like, solution for this problem. <laughs> but, so, so uh, I'll stick to it. I, I, a question or two in each of these categories. I think just one yeah. of this. 
Um, for the designers who are watching this, and sometimes I get Kickstarter creators, designers, sure. to take a fans. Um, Come on now. And um, Come on now. <laughs> when, you're, when you are, are faced with that video game challenge, when you're faced with that puzzle, right? picking up a game, which, I, to what Keith is saying, generally speaking, he isn't involved in the, in the, in the, in the main development of the game. Like, usually is, I feel pretty good about the game. Like, I try not to show to Keith until I always think he'll enjoy it. Um, <laughs> it's pretty far along and, and Keith gives some feedback and it works out, but like it's, it's, it's three quarters or four fifths of the way there, as he said, um, right. when you are presented with that game, like what are some of the ways you think about, okay, because uh, people sometimes face solo is a big growing sector, right? And yeah. many designers who design multiplayer games then are forced with this, like, okay, what's your, a publisher would be like, do you have a solo mode? Yeah. And I so, ask I ask designers that almost every time I talk to them. Right, and so like, tell me about the single player mode. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, so when you're taking that on, yeah, like what like for somebody who's a designer who's going to take on a solo mode, like what are some of the things you think about when taking on uh, a solo mode based on an existing game? Yeah, I think so. My 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 general philosophy is like it should feel like the multiplayer game as much as possible, like in terms of what you do in the game and and like the types of decisions you make and the feeling you have when you play um but it also needs at least like one or two bells and whistles to make it feel special so like it's you take a look at the game you try to figure out where like where are all the interaction points with the other players because obviously those are gonna have to be uh, either simulated by by some kind of ai with like a random element like a card deck or a dice roll um or it needs to be removed because obviously there isn't somebody else to interact with you um and then, uh, then, then figure out like what bell or whistle you can put in there to kind of uh, replace that that void that removing the pieces uh, uh, created. So, um, you know, in in the whatnot cabinet, um, there's like this. Well, there's, I, I don't know what I can show, but this, you know, there's a, there's an action it's selection journey, board and yeah, a journey board. Yeah, this is yeah. no problem, man. Reviewers have it. Pictures are out there. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, there's, there's like, there's an action selection board. So it's a matter of like figuring like, okay, well, how, what do we do to, um, make the choices for the opposing, like the, the players that aren't there? Um, and then, you know, what can we create to, to drive those actions? And in this game, it, it turned into, you know, where you're flipping cards, which tells you where the enemy AI is going so that you can't go there. Um, and then also like, um, what cards, what, uh, collectibles or items that, that they're, they're taking out of the pool. Um, and then just kind of, it, you build this kind of little random system but that, um, you know, you don't have full, full control as a player. You know, you don't know exactly what's going to happen because you don't know exactly what your opponents are going to do either. But at the end of the day, it still feels like you're playing the whatnot cabinet. I think what some designers, um, they start going down this road where they start making this kind of whole new game with the components from this other, from, from the box and I think that's um, I think that's a bad move because it's like, um, you know, I'm I'm buying this game. Yeah, I want a single solo mode for it. Like, if it, it feels too different from the multiplayer game, then it feels like I just got a box with two different games in it. Um, and a lot of times, people use the solo mode to kind of train them or to remind them of the of the multiplayer experience. Yeah. So I, I think I'm that's always important. amazed at how many people are like, my friends are coming over, so I play the solo mode, and sometimes I'm like, uh, it's not exactly the same. But um, I think those points you made are really uh, uh, re um, resonate with me. For, like being able to create and drive the aesthetic of the game, the the emotional experiences of, of right. the dynamics of it are, are is super effective. And and ha from having done this, one of the reasons I say yes to your component requests is I do think that giving it something that does make it feel a little different. So you're driving a lot of the same aesthetics, but it's a little different. Um, can bring it to life. I think that um, the way in the whatnot cabinet, you're flipping over the cards and and it's showing you know the decisions of the other player. I think works, but it's not just automated. It's a little different. There are a number of folks who really are into the like I'm playing versus an AI player experience. Right. Um, I'm not as big on that. It's sort of like right. I'm. I don't like doing spending a lot of time doing administration for an AI opponent. Like, and that's what I find a lot of those type of games tend to fall into. Is like, 
oh, here's like a, li a list of if or statements that like push all the enemies' pieces you around. It's like two players, basically. Right. It's like well, I, I, like I, that AI turn has to be fast because um, it, I want the, the solo player should be doing the playing and, and most of the time, you know. Um, and uh, for sure, and I think. Um, in particular, if we look at Herbaceous and Sunset of Water, on the Herbaceous side, the, the really fun thing you did was you added, uh, for those who are familiar with the game, um, essentially the third decision, which is very Biblios-like. Where <laughs> yeah, yeah. Herbaceous, it's like this card or this card. You added this card, this card, or put this card over here, and you added one more step, which makes it feel very very familiar but very different. Um, right. And then also in Sunset Over Water, the addition of the cabins, the like stop points, um, was a, a really interesting added location to the map that I think came right. to life. I think um, it, it also kind of allowed some additional like beautiful artwork to the board too, which I yeah, think yeah. makes makes that cool. Um, sure. And then you're going to say during Sprouts, there, it has like an AI deck, it, yeah. like an a, kind of like an AI deck. It's actually not really a deck at all. It's just like a, a card that flips back and forth to remind you like what turn it is. Um, but the AI is doing a lot of the, the things that, that the opponent would do. Um, yeah. I think of the three, for whatever reason, it's interesting. I, I often, you know, I group these games together and, and I try to figure out like which ones I like to play the most. And I still think, um, I think the, the single player mode on Sprouts, I like the best for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, it's really, it's really interesting. There, there are Sprouts and, and, and Herbaceous, like there's a really big divide. Some people really like Sprouts more. Some people really like the Bacon more. I think yeah. all of them, um, for sure. Uh, but but I think Sprouts had the meteor decisions that, you know, I, I think. Right. Herbaceous is pretty pretty streamlined of, of a game. Right. Um, okay, so that was the Whatnot Cabinet. <laughs> can't wait for people to check it out. I think uh, the full game is fantastic. I think the solo is fantastic. Stepping to the next thing. That I, that I think is, 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 is worth at least a few minutes. So, sure. obviously, I mean, we, if, we had, if we had done this normally, we probably would have been digitally recording, but, um, you know, we've obviously been going through shelter in place or stuck at home or, or, or whatever you want to call it, COVID-19, right. coronavirus. And, you know, the impact of the board game industry has been pretty big and in some different and interesting ways, right? On one hand... There's a, a, an upswing in people buying board games for at home from like Amazon. There's an yeah, impact on retailers. I mean, I, I have, there's a couple, um, like uh, Noble Night Games is, is here in my local town. And I know uh, those guys from over there that their, their business is primarily online. And like, they say they're doing really good. You know, like the people who, it seems like all, sales for online stores for, for um, the game stores are doing well, and like even my local stores, where uh, that don't do a lot of online, you know, generated online store real quick, and they've been doing a lot of pickups. And I mean, I don't think obviously it's not as well as as they've done before the quarantine, but like um, like compared to other inter industries, I feel like board games is kind of still doing okay. Well, you know, I mean, people are stuck. You know, I, I suspect. You know, I know that puzzle games have been doing puzzles. Board. I've been doing puzzles like crazy. Yeah, and 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 I would suspect family ga games that you're going to play with like the people you're you're stuck with um, uh, is is I think a big part of it. But right. then there's other things you had made, and you even mentioned this. One of the things Thunderworks Games has done really well and progressively well is conventions, um, sure. building a convention team and a convention presence. And like you were at that point where you were like a road warrior, and you were like. Convention, yeah, convention. like I, I mean, you were like at like twelve, I think I did, fourteen conventions. Yeah, I did. I think eleven last year. Maybe it was twelve. Yeah. So like, um, and they all they're all canceled. I mean, I don't think I, I don't think Gen Con has officially come to the conclusion right. yet. But I mean, everything's been sort of stopped. Um, oh, yeah, I, I think I did a convention in uh, Minnesota called Con of the North, and then Gamma for the year and then I, then it's been shut down so and gamma was really close right gamma was yeah. they were starting to like get, get a lot of people didn't just, come because yeah, you know it was getting crazy italy um, had, had, had started to act like a, a lot of europe was starting to really be impacted yeah i don't know was there any any anything to suggest that there was any i have not heard much within the industry of folks in the board game space 
getting corona from an event. I haven't I, a bunch of yeah, I haven't either. impacted, but I haven't heard it. But like that was that was right at that point where you're like, yeah. really, a lot of people getting on planes and right. There's that um, lots of stuff about the cruise ship that was you know a lot of infected people. That was like uh, uh, ships, man. That's crazy. yeah, but it was like the first one that got a lot of press and and uh, I mean flights were getting canceled and it was like it took me um, I actually was supposed to go to Protospiel, Colorado and I um, with all the stuff that was coming out while I was at Gamma like it's getting really scary and my um, my family just wanted me home so I, I bailed on um, on the guys in Colorado unfortunately. Uh, Heather Newton and her crew, uh, and I, I mean, my wife is just like, we just want you to come home because it's it's just getting crazy out there, and all the with all the stuff that was happening, Italy, because um, Italy was get, was shut down while we were there, and um, it was just it's scary. But I haven't heard anything like of any like what do they call the the Mac the Mac spreading the super spreading events or anything like that. I've, I, you know, there, I haven't heard anything about that yeah, no, for get yeah. for Gamma, right? But yeah, it was on the edge crazy. Of it. Um, and, and then since then, Origins, obviously, and just like, a number of local events. Um, and I mean, you know, you and I both uh, work with Flat River and Impressions, and I mean, like a totally different spectrum that people don't necessarily realize is, like, the 100 Tory, which is a game that um, Scott Caputo and his Detroit, uh, that Hensiverse Games published, was heading to retail, like, m- mid-March. I don't remember the exact day. And it was right. literally like we had put the solicitations, we had gotten the store orders, and then they're based in Mi- Michigan. And the governor or whomever, or whoever, mayor or whatever, was like, yep, non-essential workers. Right. Sh- shut it down. Is not, shut it down. And it was basically like, yeah, uh, we had to stop all those orders because uh, no one's at the, fa- uh, at the warehouse. And so right. it wasn't until, I want to say a week ago, 10 days ago, I don't remember what it was, yeah. that – uh, impressions and all those like okay we're gonna start actually opening it up and so Tori as of like Monday or Tuesday is going you know back into stores being able to order it but there's this like phantom six weeks where anything that was published in that period all sort of stopped not everybody but a lot of things and so right I feel like in many ways there's a lot of catch-up right now where you know you have um, they're, they're, we're, the game industry already has a, a explosion of titles being released, right. and and it just took six weeks of titles and compressed them in, into this is the, the the tidal wave of stuff is coming. So then, you know, there's questions about like um, like do we how do we spread out some of these releases? And you know, obviously, getting these games out and and starting to sell some of them is important to a lot of these publishers to keep the doors open or whatever. So. It's it's uh I think it's gonna be a tricky, uh you know, nine twelve months to like, how do all these titles kind of go through you know or arrive at the market and have at least a small window to shine before the next big thing sh- you know shows up so it gets you know the new hotness right well and so to, right. to like extend that obviously and we said this at the top of the, the interview um the one not cabinet is coming to Kickstarter in like whatever two weeks on June second. Your Kickstarter for Roleplay Adventures is like whatever five weeks, June twenty third. Yeah. When you're thinking about prepping and a Kickstarter, um, I know yeah. for for the whatnot cabinet, I, we were probably ready to go um, closer to April or March, and I was just like, I, I don't want to. We're just going to go to what I what seemed at the time on the on the far outside of it in in beginning of June. Now yeah. it's you know. Seems like it's an okay date, but it's not like I thought it was going to be a month after everyone was like back to work and normal, and it turned out not. Right. But when you think about your campaign, um, have you had to handle anything differently? Is there anything that you're keeping in mind as you're dealing with it? Yeah, I mean, um, there's like simple things like um, I do all my uh, most of my prototyping uh, for preview copies to the Game Crafter because I think they're awesome, and they got shut down. So it's like, okay, um, if I can't get like a decent looking prototype for these preview copies for the Kickstarter, then like that kind of puts the project at risk. Like if I can't get um, reviews and previews of these games, like 
maybe I need to be delaying this project until I do. Um, but then there, on, on the other hand, it's like I've already set this date, you know, for the public and like um, pushing it out is not something I want to do because I already have like money committed to certain marketing opportunities. Um, and then also like every time I think about like, you know, because I don't running a Kickstarter is not easy. Right. So <laughs> I'm always whenever I'm creeping up on the date and things are getting crunchier. I, I'm always like, well, I could delay it. I could delay it. But I know that if I do, um, you know, then it's like, well, when do you stop? When do you like, what do you delay it to? And when do you stop delaying it? So at, at some point, you got to just like say, this is the line of the sand, and we're just we're just gonna hit it no matter what. Um, maybe maybe you get an exception if it's like right in the middle of a, a quarantine or something. But um, the fact that like I didn't have access to my main source for creating prototype copies was a serious problem. Um, and, uh, in the end, like I just, uh, I called in some favors, I, you know, I printed some stuff at, at like the local Kinko's place. And then I basically called in some favors to say like, Hey, I know you're closed and everything, <laughs> but I could really use some cards. <laughs> um, so, and we worked something out. So that was cool. Uh, and now the game crafter is back open as of actually today. So, um, JT over at the game crafter really helped me out on that. Um, and basically, I asked all the reviewers, like, hey, this is coming later than I want, than, than you want, you know, this is coming in later than I promised you. Um, but this is kind of the, this is, this is kind of the state of the matter, of the, of the situation. And, and, uh, and, and speaking do your of, best. Yeah, speaking of reviewers, right, some reviewers are having a much harder time uh, doing content, playing content, um, than others, given how they normally play test. I know um, Jonathan Liu, Liu from, uh, it was uh, Geek, Geek Dad. Um, yep. Yeah. You know he's he's been playing the whatnot cabin. He's been playing it over over video conferencing with people, which is which is neat, right? But like a lot of people are trying to come up with solutions um, to figure out. You know, some people are in environments where they have uh, access to folks. Some people are just more comfortable going out and, and playing games with folks. And other people, it's family. Or, or I know a couple folks were you know when I was looking for reviewers were like, hey. I, you can send me it, but I, I don't know when I'm going to get to play it. I'll play it as soon as I'm able to hang out with folks, but otherwise, if you have a solo mode, I can play the solo mode type of thing, which, you know, yeah. I there is. But, I mean, I think at the end of the day, Frosthaven has had the crown long enough. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta, well, yeah, I mean, the whatnot cam is going to dethrone no, 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 Frosthaven. No, it's not the whatnot cam. Oh, it's, it's role player adventures, man. What? <laughs> You're yeah, I mean, de definitely playtesting during a quarantine is challenging. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, like, I'm not – I mean, I pl I've played a lot some stuff online. Like, I've been playing some on Dominion Online and some stuff on Board Game Arena and stuff. But, like, at the end of the day, like, it playing board games online takes the part that I like the most out of this hobby. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like being face-to-face -face with my friends. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not super exciting and attractive to spend time doing, um, so that's been a challenge for sure. Like any any kind of new projects uh, that are that are drumming up or whatever, like I'm not playtesting them. The, the the new projects are like here's an idea, put it over here, and and we'll pick it up when yeah. when the things open up again, you know. Um, but like I can't imagine like I mean maybe I can imagine like just being under quarantine for you know a year it's like well i think i think i think we're we're heading out of out of that yeah uh, yeah as, assuming yeah. it doesn't bounce back and do all sorts of crazy things but no but you also have weird ex experiences so um herbaceous is being uh, published by uh, quality beast in german and dutch and they also were working on a table uh, tabletop simulator version of it, sure. Um, because they were um, to deal with the distance and what they do on their end, it's just easier for them to like talk with publishers and review rules. And yeah, it's an easy. Game I mean, to do. I, I've been pitched a couple games over ta over Tabletopia uh, in, since the quarantine, and it, and obviously, I, you know, role player lockup. These things are all already on Tabletopia, so yeah. I clearly support that platform, and I understand why people like it. Um, and it works. It's just I don't but like it that thing, much. No, no. Uh, hey, man. I, 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 prefer, I, if I, my, my, my day job is video games. I like board games because they're board games. But uh, what the, the interesting story here is, 
So we were playing, and they did this thing where we met all the people, and they have this big cross international team. But they, like, wanted to play Herbaceous, but we had, like, seven or eight folks. And so we were like, well, I uh, hear, you know, at one point, I don't remember when, but I, I, we had talked about rules for a seven or eight-player game of Herbaceous. <laughs> um, and you know, I don't know if I want to play that game. No, no, you just you just need you just need two decks. All you need is two copies. Buy that second copy. So you, you you can play up to eight players. Um, but the cool thing about Tabletopia, you're like, oh, we need more cards. You just like dupe the deck and you have it, right? And you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, it actually it, it holds up pretty well. Oh, as long as you're just chilling and talking, and you're not right. like, when's it going to be my turn again? Like, it it's a fast enough game that it actually worked. It's no cartographers with a hundred people. Those events that you do there, those are. When are you going to do your your cartographer cartographer sponsorship of Zoom with your ten thousand player Zoom cartographers? Thing? When, <laughs> when is that happening? Uh, it's on the the calendar, but uh, I can't reveal it yet. No, I don't know. We were going to do some like some big games for Gen Con and Origins, and since those went away, we haven't really chased it. But I mean, a lot of people are playing cartographers over Zoom and other things. Um, it's it's kind of like it's perfect for a quarantine, you know, in terms of like one person can have the game and everybody can play, download a sheet, grab a pencil, and you're good to go. Um, so, I mean, that's an interesting point. I'll think about it. Marketing opportunity, <laughs> make it happen, man. This is you got. I, mean, I should hire you as my marketing agent. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you're doing just fine. Um, yeah. So, um, I think there was one other thing I wanted to ask you before you had to go. Uh, and if you don't know it, Keith Keith works very late at night regularly. He's a, a I'm a night owl, 100 percent yeah. worker. Um, <laughs> it was something about oh, oh I know. So being somebody, you you did leave your job, right? And you've 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 it's been two years. You are getting a studio or a warehouse or office or whatever you're going to call it. Thunderworks One. Um, <laughs> yeah. That- and it works and, HQ, yeah, that's what my know, kid calls and it. There's, I mean, we, uh, there's, this is sort of the trilogy of interviews we've had. We had it, like, right before you were making the decision or, like, that. We did, like, a year look back. It wasn't right. really the purpose of this call, but now that you're at two years, see, it's an excuse to talk again next year. Um, now that you're at two <laughs> years, you know, it was such a big decision. And, I mean, like, clearly it's worked out for you, but what do you think were the things that – you decided or did after that decision? Like, what what are the subsequent decisions you've made that you think helped you be in a place today where you're not regretting it, where you're not looking back and being like, "Yep, that was a fun little thing. I'm gonna go look for a job again." Like, what do you think were the, the good the good choices you made? Because I like a lot of the choices I made after um, after I you know I quit working my my day job was. Uh, not to take my foot off the gas, you know, it's like push harder. I was already pushing hard, like just replace that, that space with just more effort. So that, um, and so that was kind of one of the main things. Cause I've got my, my tenons or whatever, the things that I, I, fo- I try to follow, um, they, they tend to be kind of simple things like make amazing games and everything else good will follow. Like that's like one of the, one of my main things, like, um, I really definitely feel like gameplay and product come first and then and then watch people who are better than you and copy them like crazy. Um, and so those are those are like some of the main things. But like this important decision point, like once I left my day job, we're like um, there was it's, it's been an ongoing process, but like trying to figure out um, there's a lot of people that want want to help me and uh, want to see me succeed and want to be involved and figuring out like how to empower them, how to give them control of things, how to let go of certain things that I like that I traditionally like to have control over and like let them run with it and let them take it over and, and take ownership of it. Um, and that has been a long process and, and, uh, and I'm doing more and more of that all the time. Um, but that's, that, that's like something that I, I, I didn't realize right away that um, like people just want to be a part of something cool. Like people, um, they want to be, uh, involved in this and w- making cool games and be a part of the process. And, um, sometimes I'll, I put the blinders up and I focus on my work and I, I, I get my stuff going and, and um, trying to 
sh- the kind of sharing my company with the people around me um, has been like an important kind of growing experience for me. Interesting. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that like, I mean, um, yeah, I mean the other things is like lean into your strengths. You know, it's kind of it's a very similar uh, concept, but like, and some of that has to do with like planning your product line. Um, you know, like ro- I, I'm building these products on top of each other in terms of like role player, and then we've got cartographers and lockup, and now we're doing more cartographers, and then we're doing role player in kind of a different flavor that's uh, that answers a big question that people that, that have been wanting for a while. So, um, but on the other hand, I'm I'm trying to also build up other other ideas that are, are yet coming, um, so that like. Um, I can kind of grow in different directions. So um, I've always kind of uh, struggled with that. It's like, I don't know if I want to be the role player guy. Um, I mean, I love that game and it's been very successful for me, but um, I also want to be able to do other things. But on the other hand, like um, there, there is a version of the, the universe in which if I focus on role player stuff 100% of the time, I'm super successful. So... Um, Navigating those kind of two different realities um, is an ongoing struggle, but I think uh, you know you just take it one day at a time. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I think that's all. That's all good advice, man. Yeah. But um, had you on for for quite a while now. We had some wide ranging uh, ranging discussion on all sorts <laughs> of interesting topics. Um, I hope everyone uh, thought it was interesting. It's always a pleasure uh, chatting with you, Mr. Mateka. You're a busy man Thanks, these sir. days. Um, but yeah, so uh, what not cabinet, June second, upcoming. It's gonna run until like the twenty first. So you're gonna get in there, and then right at the end, a couple of days will pass, and then it's role player adventures, and then right. uh, you're you're gonna be super busy at that point. You have, you have to add on and take a like one two punch. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. Your, to your wallet. <laughs> yeah, to your wallet. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's more like a a little jab and then an uppercut. <laughs> I mean, role play, so again, this role player adventure thing, thing is, is when we say, when I bring up Frosthaven and Gloomhaven, it's that size of a product, right? I mean, this is yeah. a huge, huge thing. Half a million words. Yeah, we're going to cut down a lot of trees to make this game. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. They but we're going to plant new ones. Their... <laughs> anyway, I don't know what anyway, man, talk to you later. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Hey, everybody. Edo here, and thanks for for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.